For most people, a clear blue sky is a comforting sight. Indeed, of all the familiar sights in our life, the sky provides the reassurance that all is right with the world. But as with all things with which we grow comfortable, we sometimes take the sky for granted. Here is your sky, clear, blue, and limitless. Here is another view of your sky, this time dotted with clouds. And here also is your sky, and those now common trails. Is there any difference between this kind of airplane trail and these trails? Obviously, these easily observable trails are not natural cloud formations. They can be seen on any given day to come from airplanes. They are man-made and dissipate rapidly in the sky. These two are man-made and come from planes. But these trails linger, collect, and eventually cover the entire sky. Is there any difference between these clouds and these clouds? Between these trails and these trails? Why haven't we noticed them before? And why isn't anybody talking about them? In the early part of 1999, an immense operation began. An operation that many of us would find difficult to accept, were it not so well documented. This operation has involved a dispersal of massive amounts of fine materials into our atmosphere and the implications of these actions are as grave and far-reaching as they strain the limits of understanding. Should you ask the authorities, there will be counterclaims to the evidence presented here, and you may be told that all is normal, and as it should be. You may be told that there is nothing to be concerned about, and that everything is as it always has been. Your eyewitness accounts may be dismissed as unreliable, despite the fact that what you have observed is in direct contradiction to fundamental natural laws and your own common sense. From this point on, we urge you to look for yourself, use your own judgment, and reach your own conclusions. What you are seeing now is quite normal. These temporary trails are called contrails, which is a word formed from the words condensation and trails. They are made of water vapor, and they are a common and natural occurrence, which happens as a result of aircraft flying at high altitudes, in particular ordinary weather conditions. You can see that the condensation disappears fairly quickly, much like your breath on a cold winter day. The aircraft at the upper portion of the screen leaves a normal contrail, which vanishes as any trail of water vapor will. To contrast, beneath it is an aircraft emission that is thick, continuous, and persistent. The environmental conditions accompanying each trail are not exceptionally different from one another, and yet the result and impact from each is entirely different. The only logical way this could occur is if the two trails themselves had very different qualities, and indeed they do. The majority of the footage that you are now seeing has been filmed in the high desert regions of New Mexico. This is an arid, dry environment with very low humidity levels. Contrails are very common here because they form easily in a low humidity, dry environment. Cold and dry conditions, exactly those conditions normally found in the upper atmosphere, are extremely favorable to contrail formation. The humidity levels of the upper atmosphere are relatively low. For a normal cloud to materialize, two fundamental elements must exist, particles such as microscopic dust and moisture. Unlike contrails, clouds cannot form well in especially clean air. 
they require particles that act as a base for water vapor to cling to. The size of these particles must be extremely small, less than a hundredth of the width of a human hair. The other essential component for normal cloud formation is a humidity level of about 70% or more. Notice that the requirements for cloud formation and contrail formation are entirely different from one another. Clouds need moisture and fine particles for the moisture to cling to, and contrails need the opposite, clean, dry air. This is because they are based upon entirely different natural laws. An aerosol is a substance made up of solid particles suspended either in a liquid or a gas, and in this case we can consider our own atmosphere to be a gas. Because in addition to the normal existence of clouds and contrails, aerosol sprays are being emitted from aircraft flying at high altitudes. Aerosols in the air can be seen in two primary forms, as an emission from aircraft and as a collection of suspended particles in the atmosphere. A suitable term for this collection of aerosols is an aerosol bank. It is known now that these persistent trails, known commonly as chemtrails, from the words chemical and trails, are not predominantly water vapor, like contrails, but are primarily solid in nature, because of the sheer volume of particulate matter they contain. By simply looking up and observing the skies, one can now regularly see with the naked eye aircraft repeatedly dispersing materials into the upper atmosphere at altitudes of roughly 35 to 45,000 feet. These materials expand rather than evaporate, and they usually transform gradually into a uniform haze that has, in recent years, tremendously decreased our general visibility and has altered the deep blue of our skies into a pale blue or dirty white. Although it might be witnessed in any given period, this commonly now occurs during times of very low humidity, on the order of 30 to 40 percent, instead of the 70 percent or greater that is required of natural cloud formation. And so we know now that these are not clouds in any conventional sense. They are a unique and artificial creation. These aerosol emissions are now well entrenched into our air supply. These changes in the very air we breathe have a fundamental impact upon all life on this planet and these aerosol operations by their very nature violate the most basic human rights. These operations are being conducted without